Hello! In this video, we're going to go over how to set up directional rolling. So depending on what direction my player character will roll, will depend on what animation they play. So my player can roll backwards, to the left, to the right, and forwards. Quick note before the video starts, this video will not go over how to make a lock-on system. I basically plan to make a video on how to make a lock-on system later. Also, this directional rolling system will only work when the player character is in the controller desired rotation. So when the player character is basically oriented towards looking at something. If my player character is in their default um, locomotion, then when they roll, they'll just do a normal roll. And I already made a video about how to set up um, directional rolling if the player character is just doing a normal roll. This will be for when the player character is like locked on. Then they'll do the directional roll. And of course, if you'd like to learn how to combine this directional rolling system with a melee combat system, make sure to check out my Souls-like melee combat system course in Unreal Engine. In it, we'll cover a bunch of things, how to make a combo system, how to make a melee combat system, and a lot more. You can find a link to it in the description of the video. With that said, let's get into the video. To get started, we first want to determine what key on our player character's keyboard that our player character is pressing when they want to perform a directional roll. We're going to be referencing Unreal Engine's new enhanced input system, so bear with me. So, to create this system, if we first open up our third person character, and we want to go over to the movement input section. We basically want to determine what key our player character is pressing on their keyboard when they're moving, and we'll later use this to basically tell us what directional roll animation we should play. So to do this, if we just create a new function and just call this get action key, and then we just want to go over here and create an input and just call this action, and then for the variable type, we want to look for input action. And on this one, input action object reference. Then just compile this. And if we go to our event graph, we just want to drag in our get action key and just connect from triggered into here, from here into here, and from input action into here. So we're basically going to use this function to determine what um, key on our keyboard our player character is pressing. So to do this, we just want to right click and just uncheck context sensitive and look for the query keys mapped action message. So we want this one and just connect from action into here and from here into here and then for the target we're going to be referencing Unreal Engine's new enhanced input system to do that we just want to right click and look for get controller this one then we just want to drag off here and look for cast to player controller and then we want to right click on this and go convert to pure cast so this one at the bottom and then we just want to drag off here and look for enhanced input local player subsystem and then just connect from here into here. Then if we just drag off here and look for for each loop, this will basically tell us um, all of the different potential keys that our player character could be pressing. And then we just want to drag off here and look for is input key down. We want this one. Drag off here and look for branch. Connect from loop body into here. And if this is true, we just want to drag off here and look for return node. And we just want to basically see the key that our player character is pressing down. So just connect from here into here. And then just so that we can debug this and see the key that our player character is actually pressing down, we just want to add a reroute node and just drag off here and look for key display name. And then let's just drag off here and look for print string. And then just connect from here into here. Then compile this. Oh, and then for this, we also just need to connect from our player controller into here. So we basically know what um, key our player character is pressing and if they're holding it down. And if they are, then it's going to basically print string the key that our player character is currently pressing. So let's compile this, close this, and then play our game. When I press W, we can see it print strings W. When I press D, it prints strings D, S, and A. So basically, when I'm moving in any direction, it basically tells me um, the key that I'm pressing. Nice. Next, you're going to need to find some directional rolling animations. I can't find three directional rolling animations in all four directions, although you can find many on the marketplace. Go over to those directional rolling animations, and for each of them, just make sure to enable root motion. This will just make it so the animation will drive the movement of the character when the animation plays. So just enable root motion on all of them. Once you've done that, select all four of the animations, right click and go create, and create an animation montage. The next thing we need to do is set up what button we want our player character to press in order to perform the directional roll. So if we just go up to the third person folder, go to the input folder and over to actions, let's create a new action for when we want the player character to roll. 
So let's right click, go to input, and select input action, and just call this input action underscore role. Then we just want to go over to our input folder and over to the IMC default and just add a new mapping. Call this the input action underscore role and just expand it. And I'm going to make it so the player character has to press the left shift button in order to roll. We can then save this, close this, and then go over to our third person character, find some free space, and just right click and look for the input action underscore role. Just expand this. And when my player presses the left shift button, they're going to roll. Before we roll, we want to basically know what key our player character is pressing. So if we go over um, here, we just want to right-click on this array element and promote it to a variable. And just call this key pressed. Connect from here into here and from here into here. Then before we roll, we just want to drag in our key pressed, get it, and then just drag up here and look for get key display name. And then we just want to right-click and look for the switch on string node, connect from return value into here, and from started into here, then just add four pins, select this, and then for the first pin, make it W, then for the second one, make it A, then S, and then D, then just drag off the W, and look for play anim montage, and when we press W, we want to play the forward animation montage, I'm just going to copy and paste this three more times. When we press A, we want to play the left rolling one. When we press S, we want to play the back rolling one. And when we press um, D, we want to play the right rolling one. And then one more thing, with this directional rolling system, this is going to be for when your character is locked onto an actor. So you just select your character movement, and then go to details and look for rotation. When our character is in orient rotation to movement, because our player character will basically turn to face the direction they're moving in, it's not going to work with this system, so we just want to check use controller desired rotation and just uncheck this. I have a whole video about how to set up directional rolling if you're using the orient rotation. I'll put it somewhere on the screen now. And now I just compile this, close this, and I play my game. Let's say I'm moving forwards, when I press left shift, I roll forwards. If I'm moving backwards, and I press left shift, I roll backwards. If I'm pressing A, and I press left shift, I roll towards the left. If I press D and I press left shift, I roll towards the right. And then I just want to go over how to fix two issues with the system. If I play my game, and let's say I move forwards and then I press left shift, and then let's say I move backwards and then press left shift. If I press left shift again, my player character is going to move in the last direction that I basically press my key. I don't want that. If my player character just presses the left shift button without specifying which direction they want to go in, we should make it so they can't move. Also, another thing, if I just um, spam the forwards button, then it kind of like breaks my character and they continuously quickly roll. Hopefully you know how to fix that, but I'm going to go over it anyway. So if we just open up our third person character, we just want to drag in our get action key, connect from started into here and from impact action into here. And we just want to drag off here and we want to see if this is equal. And we want to select our left shift, left shift button. And so we drag off here, look for and boolean. We just want to drag in our key pressed, get it. And then we just want to drag off here, uncheck context sensitive if it's on. And look for is input key down. And then for the target, we just want to right click and look for get controller. And then just drag off here and look for cast to player controller. Right click on this and convert this to a pure cast and connect from here to here and from here to here. And then we just want to have a branch connect from this into here. And only if my player character is pressing the left shift button and they have a key press down, we'll allow them to roll. That should fix the first issue. So if I compile this and I play my game, when I press left shift, I can't um, roll. If I press forwards and I left shift, I can roll. And when I just press left shift, I can't roll. Okay, next to fix the spamming issue, just create a new variable and just call this can roll. Compile this and just make sure that this is true by default. When our player character um, presses the roll button, if both of these conditions are true, then we're basically just going to drag in our can roll and just set it so it's untrue. Connect from here into here. And then we also just want to add another pin here and our player character needs the can roll variable to be true 
in order to roll. And then let's just drag off here and have a delay. And just do this for all four of them. And at the end, we can just drag in our can roll and just make sure it's true and just connect from delay into here. Compile this and then play your game. And then that should prevent them from spamming the dodge roll button. Okay, so with this, our player character can directionally roll. Nice. And if you'd like to learn how to combine this directional roll system with a combat system, make sure to check out my Souls-like melee combat system course. In it, we'll cover how to make a directional rolling system. And when the player character rolls, it will drain their stamina. And when our player character does things like rolling, there'll be invincibility frames. And you'll also learn how to make a whole combat system and a lot more. There'll be a link to it in the description of this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!